Two-stroke outboard boat engines. What does two-stroke even mean? Why do we have two-stroke outboard boat engines? How do I know if I have one? Should I buy one? Hi, I'm Wayne the Boat Guy. In this video, we're gonna talk all about two-stroke outboard boat engines so that you can understand what that means and what the pros and cons are of a two-stroke boat engine. First of all, if you're new to boating and new to boat engines, this should help clarify some things for you. If you have an outboard motor or you're looking at getting an outboard motor for your boat, there are two main types of engines that you can get. There are two-stroke engines and four-stroke engines. These two right here happen to be two-stroke engines. If you're looking at an outboard engine and it was built before the year 2000, the chances are pretty good if it's a smaller one especially, that it is a two-stroke outboard engine. Because before 2000, many of your outboard motors were two-stroke motors. Many of your newer motors are now four-stroke motors. And in some areas, two-stroke motors are no longer legal to be sold. And I'll explain why. First of all, why are they called two-stroke? Without getting too technical, let me break it down to you like this. Two-stroke comes from a term about the mechanicals inside of the engine that the piston actually only requires two strokes to complete a cycle. In a four-stroke engine, the piston requires four strokes to complete a cycle. That's the basics of it. If there is a place to add oil to the engine, chances are it's a four-stroke. A four-stroke engine, much like a car engine, has an oil sump that stores oil. Many of them have an oil filter. Many of them have a place to check and fill oil in the engine. Some of the smaller four-stroke engines only have a sight glass in the side to show the oil level where you fill it back up, but they still have an oil sump. A two-stroke engine like these are do not have any kind of oil tank or oil sump in the engine at all. All of the lubrication for the engine to keep it from seizing up and coming apart is oil that you're mixing in with the gasoline and that literally flows through with the gas and out the exhaust. Hey, if you like this video, be sure to give it a like down below. Because of the fact that the oil is mixed with the gasoline is why two-stroke engines smoke more than four-stroke engines because they're burning oil all the time. And because a two-stroke engine actually burns oil with the gas and smokes a little bit more is why many manufacturers aren't making them anymore. And in some places, two-stroke engines are not allowed to be sold new or used on certain bodies of water. I believe in Australia, you're not allowed to buy a new two-stroke outboard engine. And maybe in the US, we'll be there very soon. And it's because a two-stroke outboard engine actually pollutes more than a four-stroke outboard engine. Now, the nuances of that are debatable, but in general, the efficiency of the burn of a two-stroke engine is much less efficient. So if two-stroke engines aren't as efficient and don't do as good of a job as a four-stroke engine, why did we even make two-stroke engines? The advantage of a two-stroke engine is that it's a simple design. There's less moving parts, which means less things to break, which also means less cost to manufacture. Many two-stroke engines also do not have valves. So the vacuum inside of the engine is what brings in the gas and the oil and ejects the gas and the oil. There are no valves in the cylinders opening and closing. Four-stroke engines may have camshafts and lifters and valves in each cylinder and a two-stroke engine doesn't have those kinds of things. By having less moving parts inside, it's a simpler design, less components, simpler to manufacture, and quite frankly, simpler to maintain. And many people are of the opinion that a two-stroke engine is actually more reliable than a four-stroke engine. I'm not so sure about that myself. I think one of the reasons that two-stroke outboards are very prevalent with older boat engines is because it's an easier technology, so it was cheaper for the manufacturers to produce two strokes. The simple design made them potentially more reliable, and that's one reason why we still see 
many old two-stroke outboard engines still around today. One reason why you do not see newer two-stroke outboard engines is because the laws have changed to reduce pollution. But in addition to that, four-stroke engines are now becoming more efficient, more reliable, as well as polluting less. What used to only be possible with a two-stroke engine now is able to be accomplished with a four-stroke engine. And many of your very low-cost engines now are available in two-stroke and four-stroke configurations. And with recent advances in technology with four-stroke engines, there's no need to make a two-stroke engine anymore when you can sell your four-stroke engine anywhere in the world. How do you tell if an outboard that you're looking at is a two-stroke or a four-stroke engine? And unfortunately, there really is no easy way to tell. With many outboard engines, there is nothing on the cowl or underneath of there that indicates whether it is a two-stroke or four-stroke. You would think they maybe would write it on the side of it, but we have here an old Evinrude two-horsepower, two-stroke engine, and a much newer Mercury 2.5 horsepower two-stroke engine. And I took a good look all over these engines to see if anywhere there was anything that said, this is a two-stroke engine, or be sure to mix your gas with your oil. Interestingly enough, this old Evinrude has a sticker on top of it indicating that fuel and oil have to be mixed together. Well, my much newer Mercury does not have any such sticker or indication anywhere outside of the engine or on the fuel filler cap indicating that oil must be mixed with the gasoline. One of the only ways to know whether an outboard engine is a four-stroke or a two-stroke engine without taking it apart and understanding the mechanicals under the cowl is to look to see if it has an oil fill. So unfortunately, it's not easy to quickly look at an outboard engine and determine whether or not it's a two-stroke or four-stroke. However, on engines built prior to 2000, chances are, if it's an outboard engine, it's probably a two-stroke engine. Newer than 2000, you have to do a little bit more digging. For example, this engine here, which is actually made by uh, Tohatsu, I believe there's a four-stroke version of this engine that was made that looks very, very similar to this one. But whenever I purchased this, I asked the seller about it, and he told me this was a two-stroke engine. For those of you who are more mechanically inclined, lifting the cowl and taking a look around inside of one of these does help clarify whether or not it's a two-stroke or four-stroke engine. But for the average person who is looking for an outboard motor, basically it's about asking the seller to find out if your engine that you're looking at is a two-stroke or four-stroke engine. A two-stroke or two-cycle engine requires special oil. And this is some high-performance outboard oil for a two-cycle engine right here. I'll have a link to be able to purchase some of that via Amazon in the description below. You do not just want to take your 10W30 from your car or your 0W20 and mix it with some gasoline and put it in your two-stroke engine. There are specific ratios for how much oil you're supposed to put in with your gas based on the engine. These older outboard engines, I think both of them are 50 to one ratio. So for every 50 parts of gas, you're running one part of oil. And many times your oil bottle will actually have the formula for mixing on the back of it, or you can get a special cup that breaks down the measurements. So that way you pour in some gas, a little bit of oil, add that to your tank. So if you know that you have a two stroke or two cycle engine, you should never run it with just gas without oil mixed in there. And that oil needs to be mixed properly. So for example, to mix 50 to one, for two gallons of gas, you add five ounces of oil. So for my metric friends, for every 10 liters of fuel, you would add 200 milliliters of oil for a 50 to one mix. It's very important to know whether your engine is a two stroke or four stroke before you put fuel in there and even run it for the very first time. If it's a four stroke engine and you put oil in the gas, it's not gonna run right. If it's a two stroke engine, and you run it with gas without oil in it, you're gonna seize up the engine. It's not gonna be right. It's not gonna last you long at all. Because a two-stroke engine always requires oil to either be mixed with the gas or injected into the engine. I used to have a 1985 Evinrude V4 that was a two-stroke engine, 
and it was oil injected. So it had a separate oil tank with a hose that went into the engine where it injected it into the engine itself. But most two-stroke engines require you to mix your gas and your oil in the gas can or in the case of a really small one like this where it has a built-in fuel tank, you mix your gas and oil before you pour it in here. As far as which one is best for you, they're both good. Two-stroke engines are definitely a really great option for boaters on a budget if they're allowed to be used in the waters that you're boating in. One of the things that makes having a two-stroke engine tricky is that you always have to remember to mix your gas and your oil. So you have to have a special container that is just for your two-stroke engines where you're mixed your gas and your oil. And if you happen to have something like a two-stroke uh, weed whacker or something else, that might use a different ratio mix than your outboard engine. So then you have to have two separate gas cans, one with your 35 to one mix and one with your 50 to one mix. So that does complicate things a little bit more. And obviously if you're running a four stroke outboard engine, you can just put gas in there just like you do your car. It really comes down to what's available to you, what you're allowed to use on your bodies of water and which one you prefer. However, I do know that a two-stroke pollutes more than a four-stroke, and so the idea of running a two-stroke out on my river, knowing that it pollutes a little bit more than a four-stroke, that doesn't sit too well with me, but that's just me personally. Be sure to check your local regulations, because if you plan on boating on a specific lake, they may not allow a two-stroke engine to be used on there. They may not even allow a four-stroke engine to be used. There are some lakes and bodies of water that do not allow any gasoline engines at all. So be sure to check before you go to purchase something like this, if you're gonna use it in a very specific body of water. In the upcoming years, there may be more and more bodies of water that prohibit or restrict the use of any type of gasoline engines and may require people to use electric motors only. As I've mentioned in some of my other videos, I would love to be running an electric motor on the back of my little boats. However, these are a whole lot cheaper than an electric outboard is right now. The price isn't even close. When I can consider that I can buy a used one of these for a couple hundred dollars, and an electric outboard is gonna cost me a couple thousand dollars. As far as which one is best, I don't think there is a best between a two-stroke and a four-stroke. They both have their pros and their cons. As of right now, it really comes down to the economies of these types of things. I can buy a used two-stroke outboard engine like this one here that's very nice for a few hundred dollars. Because there's so many two-stroke engines that are still out there and available, many times people will still be making the decision to run a two-stroke engine until it's no longer viable to run a two-stroke engine. So I hope this video helped explain and clarify the difference between a four-stroke and a two-stroke outboard engine so that you can make a better informed decision as to what type of engine is right for you and your boat. And here's another video that's similar to this one for your viewing pleasure, and a playlist of videos similar to this one as well. Thank you so much for watching and stay safe out there on the water.